tutorial on how to use value files to add to your existing cal to tune the bike to match what you've got. So when we build calibrations with power visions um, for Harley Davidson motorcycles on dynos, uh, what we're really doing is we're calibrating the air tables so that the computer knows exactly what the airflow is through the engine. You know, so the ECM airflow model matches the actual airflow. And well, that's the main thing we're doing. Beyond that, we throw some tuning stuff in there, air fuel ratios and what have you. Theoretically, the air tables could be copied from one to the other and that would work. So that's basically what we do when we do this. Rather than starting with a map from DinoJet or somebody else or a map we've already built, we've got lots of maps. But rather than starting with one of those, instead we take the air tables from a map we built that match the profile of the bike we're working on. So the same cam, same pipe, same heads. If the engines match, then these tables work. We're going to show you how to pull the calibration out of your motorcycle stock or not, and how to apply these value files that will calibrate it as if it was dialed in on a dyno. 90% of the time, these are really good and writable. We always recommend polishing or cleaning them up because every bike is just a little bit different. So maybe even require a little bit of dyno tuning or even polish, which you can even do actually with the stock O2 sensors if you like. But if you use the stock O2 sensors and auto tune, only use it in the cruise area. Don't do any hard accelerations and stuff with that. Okay, so let's get going. First thing, I want to get the STK file out of the bike. To so get the STK file, there's more than one way to do this. This is how I do it. I go get license. Even if I already got a tune license, I use this to get the STK file. So when you go get STK, you got your choices here. I, I just go right to the ECM. The bike's on the dyno. It's plugged in. Let's just go. Um, so it tells me it's going to read the ECM. Um, then if you look at your power vision, the, the screen on your power vision, you'll see that it, it shows that it's reading it. And then that takes a few minutes. When it is done reading it, you'll see that up here we have the STK file. So, as a rule, I always save STK, so that would be the next thing I do is I go save STK, and I actually we've got a folder here for it, for the video, and we'll just save it here. And we're going to use this STK file here in a few minutes as our start to build our map, our calibration. You don't need a tune license with the PowerVision OG to read it, but if you want to write to it, you have to have one. So if you have one, you can load it. If it's already on your power vision, you don't need to do this next step. If you don't have it, you know, well, then you could buy one. I've got three credits up here, so I could buy one for it. But I've already bought one for this bike. And rather than go to the file and get it, which I could, I'm on the internet. So I can click like get license. Previously purchased license will download. So watch the note it gives you. If it tells you it's going to use a token and you already have a license for it, don't do it unless you're ready to pay the money for it. Usually, if you've already got one and it's in your file and you're, you're on the DinoJet and you're logged in, it'll just pull it right off the internet for you, right from the cloud or clown, like John says. Existing license loaded. If I didn't have this saved, I would save it as well. I already have it saved here for this one, so we're good. Done with this screen. We can hit exit. We'll just get the SDK so I can build the map with that. And I always do it, even if I already got maps from this bike, and I almost always read the SDK. This way, if the customer's played with it or anything's been different or whatever, I pull all that out. I get to see what's going on now. So hit exit. Then I'm going to go ahead and open the SDK. So this is the folder I saved it to, but it's not there. PB doesn't naturally recognize the SDK, so you have to tell it all files. And I can see the SDKs that I got here. So this is the newest one. We'll go ahead and just open it. And it takes it a couple of minutes. You get a little spinning wheel going on here. Once in a while, it will actually error doing this. The new version seems a lot more stable, so I haven't had that in a while. Um, but it used to be fairly common where we had every three or four times to try this. So it would lock up during this process. It would crash and give you an error. You'd close WinPV, restart WinPV, and try it again. And as long as the power vision that you read the STK file with is plugged into it, it should change it over. Like I said, it's just a little slow at first. Here we go. Turn is ready for editing. So we click OK and it shows it to us. Over here, we've got our different tables. We're not going to cover all of these now, but we're working on a video that will explain a lot more of them. Um, 
I'm going to look at the air fuel ratio real quick because I'm going to show you this is one of the tables we will be changing. It's 14.5s, 14.6s, some 14.4s over here, 12 eights over here. So, typical dyno jet table. Go to tune info, calibration ID. You can see that is a dyno jet tune number. So this is one of their, their tunes. <laughs> Not a common. We run into them and other people's tunes all the time. Under airflow, engine displacement technically is mislabeled. It really means total volume of air the engine's capable of pumping. So if you take a 107 and you put a good cam in it and a good pipe on it, and it's making a lot better power. This number is going to be like a 120 or something. It's not going to be this 107. And it's not because we made the engine bigger. It's because we've got it pumping more air as if it was made bigger. We just made it more efficient. You're going to see all the tables I'm going to bring in here in a minute. But rather than just writing this map or putting a new map in it, I'm going to replace the data on specific tables that I need to for the tune. We need engine displacement because the V tables were built for that. And then you need your VE front and VE rear. Um, we'll bring in some other stuff just because we, we use that when we do all this. We'll change the, the throttle blade control that will make this a little different. Um, a couple things like that. As a rule, we always bump the rev limiters, the speed limiters, and other stuff. So you're going to see a bunch of stuff come in. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go file. Load all values. This is a 107 with a wood 77 cam and a fuel moto pipe. And that's the folder we're in. Lucky me. This is the map we built for this bike originally, 2022. This is the upgraded version of that map because when they change firmwares in the power vision and you open a map, um, it wants to upgrade it. So you upgrade it to the newest firmware version, which changes the way the tables display, what tables are displayed and so forth. I don't want the whole map. I just want the value file. So this is a value file that I made from this calibration file that we built. So basically we tuned this on the dyno and I took the air tables and the other files that we changed tune wise and put them into this file. If I open that, it'll come up with a screen and it'll tell me the tables it wants to change and it'll tell me if it can change it. So RPM limited. Changes it from 62 to 64 engine displacement. We change from 107 to 122, just like I said. It's, this has a, a woods cam in it, so this, this engine really breathes a lot better than a stock 107 does. Um, our main stuff was the VE tables, our engine displacement, and map tooth IVO and IVC. This, this affects the map read based on a changing cam profile, and we fine-tuned that with the map normalization tables. All of these tables were done on the dyno, dialed in to be perfect on the motorcycle it was equipped with these same parts so we bring them into this bike and it should work pretty good so all we got to do at this point is just click ok and it will bring all these tables and put that data on the tables for this map um, if there's something here i don't want to change you just turn the checkbox off and then it won't bring that one over so we'll go ahead and we'll click ok we imported 24 24 items now, if we go to the air fuel table, which had 14 sixes and fives before, you'll see it's got 14 fours and 14 threes, and it doesn't go out near as far. Um, this is what we feel is about the ideal air fuel table for most road performance motorcycles that are being driven on uh, private roads, if you will, quotation marks there. Okay, so that's it. Basically, this is done, right? At this point, I would send it to the motorcycle, and if I was on the dyno, I'd polish it in. Um, but if I think it's pretty close... Um, I could just send it to the motorcycle and we'll go ride it. I put it slot one, doesn't really matter. I'm going to give it a name. I call it T1. And because we just want to send it, want to send it straight into the bike, we're going to use Fast Flash. If we were going to auto tune this afterwards, you wouldn't want to enable Fast Flash. It wouldn't hurt you if you did, it just wastes your time and battery. Because you're going to have to, to put it in auto tune mode, you have to take the power provision. And actually, it'll send the map to the ECM in, in auto tune mode with the power vision because it makes changes to some tables when it sends it into auto tune mode. And then when you export data from auto tune, it undoes those changes and then it brings in the data that it recorded. Anyway, so fast flash, always a good idea to reset adaptive fuel. Uh, closed loop goes back to zero and has to learn with the new map and stuff that's in it. We'll click OK. And it'll come up with this little message telling us that it saved it to the power vision successfully. If it was done right, it tells you to please pay attention to the power vision. I'm not putting the video of that up now. We may do that in the future. But once you click OK, if you switch over and watch the power vision screen, you'll see that it's reading the ECU, preparing the ECU, it writes and reset fuel trims. You can watch it do all of this stuff. It does take a few minutes. 
Okay, when it's through writing for the ECM, the uh, power admission goes back into PC link mode and ECU updated pops up onto the screen here. So at this point we click OK. And that's it. Shut the motorcycle off for 20 or 30 seconds. Turn it back on, start it up. She should be good to go. And if you did have a stock map in it or something pretty close and you, and you actually got this cam and you put this in it, this thing will sound different at idle and run better. You'll know the difference right off the bat. So we have a handful of these up for Milwaukee 8. Um, we're going to be putting up more and we're going to be putting up some for some twin cams. If you have any questions, please let us know. Um, DinoTraining.com um, is currently where a lot of this is going. We are talking about doing some different stuff, maybe a podcast and that. So, you know, it's going to take a little bit to get rolling and we're getting resettled back in and, and going at it again. So bear with us and I hope you guys find this useful and you know, I hope you use our, our map files that we're going to have that you can download. See ya.